See, I'm on the ball. Let's go to Ephesians. Yes, Lord. I love the praise and worship. I love this. I just, um, last night and yesterday morning and so on, I was listening to the songs, Lee Greenwald, you know, and all of those. It just, it makes your heart just swell to know we're in such a great country, but we need to appreciate it. We need to, to speak good of it, and I'll share that with you quickly. But first of all, we're going to pray the word because the word of God is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. The life is in the word. The power is in the word to frame this world. So, Father, we thank you and we give you the glory and the honor and the praise, starting at verse 17 in Ephesians 1. Coria sia cario coria te. Father, we ask you and we thank you for your wisdom, for your revelation, for the knowledge of you, for the eyes of our understanding to be opened, to be enlightened, so that we will know what is the hope of your calling, what is the riches of your glory, what is our inheritance as your children. I thank you, Father God, that you have given us the authority and the power. You've given us the word to speak. You have given us the ability to frame our world in Jesus' name. Do you agree? You may be seated. This, this is your gift will make room for you. This is in Proverbs 18, 16. Your gift will make room for you and bring you in the presence of important people. Meaning, when you have need of something, God will put you in that place so that you can pray for others. I'm going to give this real quick testimony. Uh, a person had called me from another state. We, we'd been going back and first personal messaging and needed help with some bit, something. And I shared this a little bit on Wednesday night or Thursday morning. I can't remember. And um, the situ situation did not look good at all in the natural. But when you step out of the natural into the spirit realm, it's like yesterday, if you're in an air-conditioned house, I mean, and it's really, uh, let's say they get it 70 degrees or 50 or 65 degrees, and that's cold, right? But if you step out of that house, like yesterday, I stepped out the front door by our pool, and I went, whoo, it's like a sauna. When you step out of the natural you're stepping out of that ice and cold into the supernatural, an atmosphere that's beyond what we could ever imagine, and it's an atmosphere of faith. And God will take care of you. You'll be able to breathe. You'll be able to handle anything because of stepping into the spirit realm. So we as human beings, once you come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you become born again. It's called born again. I didn't understand at first what that meant. And when I accepted Jesus, the woman explained it. I thought, oh, I can do that. And so when you say, Jesus, come into my heart, what happens to you? Well, let's look a little bit here. What does revel? I'm going to just wrap up a preface of, of last week and this week and uh, just get a real close picture of this. It says, um, your voice, this is me, your voice carries words. Your voice carries words, like um, it, Pastor Kenny's voice just carried words to Evelyn. If he just stu stood there and went, come on up here, come on up here, well, they'd all come up. But his voice produced. Your voice, your words produce, either good or evil. Now, in Revelations, and I brought this out last week, 4.11, Revelations 4.11, says it this way, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for the 
When you look into the word of God and you look at all the promises that God has released, 2 Corinthians 1.20, he said all of the promises in the word of God are 100% guaranteed. 2 Corinthians 1.22, the word of God is guaranteed. When we speak our own words, they are not guaranteed. Oh, but they are by the devil. Yeah. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. You're going to eat the fruit, whatever it is. So I'm here for God's good pleasure. Now, in 11.3 of the Amplified, Hebrews 11.3. I'm going to go quickly through this because you've already got this. Hebrews 11.3, the Amplified. By faith, we understand that the worlds during a successive ages were framed, fashioned, put in order, and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God, so that what we see was not made out of the things which are visible. So we have an invisible. You can see it through the word of God. When you pray, when you step, when you're born again, that invisible has come inside of you. And now you look at this and you see what's inside of you. Every promise in this word is inside of you. So now I can frame my world. That's exactly what God did, didn't he? He framed the world with his words. You can frame your world. So how is your life going? How is your life going? What's happening in your life? Well, well that's my mom's fault. It's my sister's fault. It's my dad's fault. It's your fault, Pastor Kenny, that I am like I am. No, no, no. You frame your world with your own words. You know, if you're always angry and getting mad at people, you're framing your world of anger, depression, oppression, and every evil thing can come in there. And you say, why is my life such a mess? I used to say that. See, a lot of times, I'm talking about me. I'm not talking about anybody here. I'm talking about me. Why am I so miserable? <laughs> because I was framing my world, but who was I hanging around? You know, if you hang around negative people, what is going to happen? You're going to become negative. You're going to become just like them. God says, watch who you hang around, because you'll become like them. Now, some people, they're, they're married, they have a spouse, some kids, you live in a home where your parents are negative, but you still can make a choice to choose this day whom you're going to serve in Deuteronomy 30, 19. You can choose to take the word of God. Is it going to be a little harder? Absolutely. But you can call on the word of God to help. God help me. And he will help you. We don't have excuses. We frame our world. So how is everything happening in your world? What, what is happening? Well, let's, let's look here once. Okay, think about this. God has generated all the power that we need. Did that song, I like that. He's got all the power you need. He, he's already generated healing for diseases. He's already generated wealth for death. He's already generated every one of those things. But what are we saying? That your, your son, daughter comes to you or somebody comes and says, well, why don't we buy that? Well, I can't afford it. What did you just say? Is that, is that evil, what you just said? Say yes. Why? Because that's not in God's vocabulary. That is not in God's vocabulary. He says he has given you wealth. 3 John 2, I pray that you would prosper, be in health just as your soul does prosper. He is talking about health, wealth, peace, love, joy. He's got it all covered in there. But what do we do? We operate in the natural of what we can see, hear, taste, and smell. That's, we're going to get in trouble. So now, I, I want to read this to you. In Mark 11, do we have that one up? On, no, I don't. I don't think so. Mark 11, 22. It says, this is the American Standard Version. I like to go through the versions and just 
pick it up. And then I like to look in the Strong's Concordance, and I like to look in the history. So this is Jesus speaking in Mark. And he said, And Jesus answered, saith unto them, Have faith in God. What was he saying? What do you mean have faith? I have faith. I believe you, but I just don't understand. I'm just all. Well, was this before the disciples were born again? Yeah. This is before. So Jesus was saying, have faith in God. I'm going to go away, but I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. But I, the Father, Son, and Go the Holy Ghost are going to come inside of you. And that faith that I just told you about is going to be inside of you. It's God's faith that's in you. But the thing that you've got to fight is the mind, will, and the emotions, the soul. Allie's been teaching that on Wednesday night. It's delicious, and on Thursday morning. But just think, your mind, will, and emotions, that's what you have to change. Renew your mind, right? Because you are downloaded with an overload of sufficiency. So now you have, you have the health, you have the wealth, you have the peace, you have the joy, you have everything you need. Of. But why do we still operate in the natural? Because we still don't get it that that's already in us. God's faith is in you. Now you tell me this. When, you, when I talk about the seed, okay, the, well, this is in... Uh, you, I'll read this here one, Hebrews 4.12. For we have the living word of God, which is full of energy, the living word of God, right? Hebrews 4.12. Then he says, and it, and it pieces more shapely than a two-edged sword. Pierces, I'm sorry. It pierces sharper than any two-edged sword. It will even penetrate to the very core of our being, where soul and spirit, bone and marrow meet, it interprets, interprets and reveals the true thoughts and secret motives of our heart. So who, who, what, what is the word? The word is alive. Now, everybody has seen a seed. I know I go over and over and over this, but you've seen a seed. If a seed drops to the ground, okay, in front of my house, right off my porch, all right, if we used to spit watermelon seeds out there, and the watermelon would grow. Why? Uh, because we have got bark there, and it gets caught under there, and it will produce. Okay? I've got lettuce, uh, romaine lettuce that I planted a few years ago. It automatically comes up. Don't ask me how. It's not supposed to. It's an annual, not a perennial. But it's up, and it's even in the sidewalk growing between the sidewalk, there is some romaine lettuce. I went around the back of the house the other day, and I was pulling weeds, and I've got a pot out there, and I don't have anything in it. I'm giving it a rest. There is a romaine lettuce plant. What you mean, Lord, when I was praising and worshiping over that, he said, yeah, I gave you the desires of your heart. You like that, don't you? Uh-huh. Do you see what I'm saying? The word of God produces, but that seed from that romaine lettuce has blown over or regenerates in that earth. Our heart is the ground. When you take the word of God that is live and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, and you give voice to it, you just activated that word. But who has the power? Do you have the power? You have the power to speak it. But... Who put the power in the seed? God put the power in the seed. When that seed is planted, when you speak it, what is going to happen? It's going to produce. This person, I spoke the word of God with them, and I said, do you agree? Yes. Whatever you say, don't you dare speak what you just told me. You speak, it's already done. If you see it's not happening, what do you do? Father, show me what is hindering my seed from producing. And you pray in tongues, and it 
will, he will show you. But he doesn't show me because you're not listening. You don't settle down. You're so busy looking at the natural. Get away from some of those people that are pulling you down. You know, when I come born again, got born again, you know, and, and you develop friends. After a while, my friends all walked away from me. I couldn't figure it out. Finally, I, I realized it. They didn't have the truth of the word of God. But God was leading me to get to Andrew Womack, to Pastor Dollar, to Pastor Winston. You know what I'm saying? So that I could get the truth. So I could take it, take it, chew it, huh? digest it, and regurgitate it. Just like a little bird. Right? The mama gets the worm. She takes it, num, 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 feeds it to the little bitty babies. And after a while, they can eat the worm themselves. But I got to stay on the word of God. I got to spend more time in that word of God and not around people that are negative. I mean, you're not negative. But if people are around me and they're speaking the opposite of the word of God, if I always have to be correcting, that's going to be a, a mess. So it's good to get away just like Jesus did. Why did he get away so much? Because he had to get away from the disciples. He was teaching them, but they were very negative at times, weren't they? They liked the hype. They liked that, ooh, look at Jesus. And everywhere they went, they looked good because, look at, I'm a follower of his. Until they arrested him. And what happened to them? They're, oh, wait a minute, they're going to hang him on the cross? Peter, no, I don't know him. I, I, I have no idea. Who is he? They fled. They hid. He knew that was going to happen. Let's think on things like that. How many times do we hear the word of God and we don't repeat the word of God? How many times? I know I'm skipping over here, but think on this. If you, when you get the word of God and you start to let that grow and you renew your mind, with that seed that's in you, and you say, my spirit, soul, and body, this does not have, this mind, soul, spirit does not have the faith that my spirit man has because who's in my spirit? God is in my spirit, and it's his faith that's in me because I'll tell you, if it was my faith, that'd be gone in a, two seconds. But, once I pray, and, I, and my body says, you're still sick, what do you tell your body? Oh, no, devil, not today. No, body, you are healed in the name of Jesus. See what you're doing? Finances. Nope, I prayed for those finances. It's already finished. I'm wealthy. Hey, money, get over here. We speak to things. Jesus spoke to things. So what he's doing, he's saying, you... Jesus was talking here to the disciples. He was teaching the disciples. I, right now, I'm showing you I have faith in God, but I'm going to leave, but that faith is going to be in you. That seed now is going to be planted in you. Now, what you do is you take that seed and you voice activate that seed, and that seed has the power in it. Just keep this mind, will, and emotions in order. Watch who you're hanging around. Watch what you're thinking. Watch what you're saying. You know, you look out there. I, I told you this. I, maybe it was on Thursday. I don't know. But um, the man and woman who are protecting their home with guns. Mm -hmm. I know the proper way to hold a gun is, you know, what, you, you don't put your finger on the trigger. We know that, you know, and you hold it down like a policeman does. And when, you know what, if I was her, I'd have had that thing right out there too. You know what I'm saying? But they had a gun. Oh, they were peaceful. Why the gate, why was the gate broken and twisted and coming into their land? So they were, what were they supposed to do? Were they supposed to let the devil the devil come in and kill them and burn their houses? Yeah, that's why is the devil trying to get into your framed world? The way he gets in is with your words. 
all of this just isn't working. I'm just, you know, I try so hard. Zip your lip. Zip it. Stop talking. Take the word of God. You are going to doubt. But God says, Romans 4, 17, call those things the way they are right now, the way you want them to be. If you don't have the money, you say, I have the money. If you don't have the money, then what you want to do is you want to ask the Lord, what is hindering my success? It's 100% us, you know. We're responsible. Oh, no, I just know the, more hard, the harder I try, the worse it gets. It's just, um, you just let me know the harder you try. The only thing you have to do is give voice to the word of God because that word of God has the faith in it. It has the life in it. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, the word of God. And that has been planted in you. I mean, it gets me so excited. i got to just settle down again. So when you're born again, you have the faith of God that's given to you. It's in you. You have his faith. Get that? Who's in you? Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. When you, when you ask Jesus to come in here, the whole gang came in. Oh, I love it, the God kind. Now your soul is your mind, and your will and your emotions have to come into order to what you're saying. Think on that. So the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Now, last week I was talking about when... When the devil broadsides you, what do you speak? What do you speak when you get a bad report about yourself or somebody else, about your finances? I don't care what it is. If you get a bad report, they tell you something bad. Huh? Oh, you know what? They're going to come take your car away. Oh, you're not going to get that job, you know. Oh, oh, you know, you'll never get healed. The doctor said there's no heal. There's n you just can't. There's no, you know, your marriage. No, it's over. Uh-uh. No, no, it's not. What you do is you bind the devil. That means tie him up. I tie you up, devil. Release your power, and I loose the power of the Holy Spirit in that situation so that he goes to work. And then I pray in the Spirit. Oh, you get serious. You are praying the word of God, and the word of God will go and kick his butt around. That's what we got to do. We're a bunch of pansy, not you. Sometimes I can be a pansy. <laughs> you know what my mom said? You know what my dad said? Oh, shut up. Why don't you say what God says? Can you speak? Voice activate the word of God. So, somebody dies, you shall not die, but live and declare the works of God, right? We got to get this thing. You, some of you have got this thing. You know, Andrew, um, I think it was Andrew, was saying we really have to spend time getting to know God and having a relationship. A relationship is like when you, get to, when you first meet somebody, you know, you meet them and you get to know, like I'll, I'll use Dee over here. Uh, we've been getting to know her. She's been coming on Thursday morning and for church and so on. <coughs> And the more I get to know her, the more I understand, and the more you think, boy, she's my sister in Christ. Same thing with Keisha. Okay? The more, the more I got to know Keisha, whoo, same thing. We don't look that Indian here and, and a black woman here. We don't look at that. Got it? Do you have it? We are one because we got the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in us, and we're all one. But our words are what changes the situation. Do you know that? I don't know how far I'm going to get into that, Keegan, but we'll wait. So in Proverbs 12, 22, it says, God can't stomach liars. He loves the company of those who keep their word. How many people keep the word? 
How many people keep the word? Yep, I'm going to be there at 9 o'clock. How many, you know, this, I told you the last time I was going to the video, or going someplace the other day, and I knew I was going to be a little late. The, the, I don't know why they had 441 down to cones in the road and everything, and so it slowed me up. And I call, oh, thank you for calling, Pastor Jan. I got there one minute early. I didn't speak. My word is good. And if you guys know, if I'm not there, something's wrong. Do you understand that? Is your word good? If our word isn't good, we'll think everybody else's word is no good. Right? Yeah? So, now, Keegan, bring this up, would you please? In 1 Timothy 6.12, what does it say? Because we're going to wind this up soon here. He was saying, fight the good fight or run the good race of faith, grabbing hold of the life that con continues forever eternal life. Now, how can we do that? Because of he that is in us. Because his faith is in you. The only thing you have to do is voice activate his word. His faith takes over. His faith will produce. Can you take a seed out of a package you're going to plant a garden. You're going to plant seeds. Can you take an empty seed with nothing inside of it and put life into it? When, when that seed comes, there's life in there, even though it looks like it's dead. Right? Does that amaze you that the trees, in the fall, they lose their leaves, and here comes winter, and you say, that tree is dead. And the spring comes and it starts to bud. What is that? God preserves that. The life is in it. Stuff goes down into the roots, doesn't it? And it preserves it. We have got the word of God that preserves us. But we've got to take it. We've got to use it. Now, 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and 5. This is the expanded version. It says, for we fight... We 
have the authority. We have it. If you have asked Jesus into your heart, and you have, then that means you are the strong man. God has given you the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in you. In, do you get it? You have that in you, and now that you know you can speak God's word, and what is in God's word? The power. That you can, not, I'm my own man, I can do it myself. No, you can't. I, I'm going to do what I want. Nobody can tell me what to do. You're in trouble. You are saying, God, I know of you, but I don't have a personal relationship with you, and I'm going to have problems. That's what you're saying. But when you say, Father, you are inside of me, and it's your faith inside of me, the only thing I have to voice it, and then speak to this here, body, soul, and spirit, and keep on speaking the word of God, even though sometimes I don't even understand what's going on. But if he tells me to rebuke the enemy, okay, there's a big dog coming running at you. You never saw the dog before. And you know that dog's going to eat you up. It's going to bite you. It's going to drag you around. It's going to hammer you. And you go, and you're just a little kid, and you say, stop in the name of Jesus. What is that dog going to do? Sink into the ground. That's the power that we have. We're the little kid. God has the power. Satan thinks he's a big man, but he's been destroyed through Jesus Christ. The only way he has power over us is if we speak it. I don't have any money. You just spoke Satan's words. You know, I've had this sickness for years. I just can't... Hmm. My family just is the worst family in the whole world. You just cursed yourself. You know, when Jesus cursed the fig tree, he said you'll never produce fruit again. He was saying, when you defile God, you cannot have fruit come forth. Did you get that? Fruit is what? By the stripes of Jesus. Like, for instance, you got a stomach ache. In the name of Jesus, stomach, I speak to you. You'll be healed in Jesus' name. Is it burning? I speak to you, burning. Get off of my body. Cancer. Cancer, I speak to you, wherever the cancer is. I speak to you. Get off of my body in Jesus' name. It's got to obey you because of who that is in you, and you just spoke God's word, and the power is in that word, and the power will distinguish it, get it out, done, it's over. But then you got to get that fixed in your head. you got to fix, you know, and I was saying this person from further away, we prayed, and it finally came through. But at one time, there was something said. Don't change what we prayed. You'll hear me say that. If I pray for you with something and you turn around and you say, I don't know, but shut up. I know parents don't like to say that, but God's word, if you look up words in the strong scripture, and when, when that was the understand, shut up means to close your mouth, don't speak. They didn't mean it like now today. Oh, don't say shut up. Get a real life. Then say, stop talking. Same thing. Guess what? It came to pass even better than what this person expected. How can you raise from here right up to here and just several weeks ago thought, you're losing that job? How can it be? Because the word of God carries the power and we planted that word of God because if two come together in agreement, whatever they agree on, they shall have it. It's guaranteed. It was guaranteed, but you got to keep your mouth shut from anything else but what it says. Well, I've been confessing this. and co um, So you're repraying it over and over and over? Well, yeah. <laughs> That's unbelief. Once you have prayed it, keep this here in order that it's already done. In um, Daniel 9 and 10, chapter 9 and 10, Daniel prayed. 
The first time it took three minutes for his prayer to be answered. Chapter 10 in Daniel, it took three weeks. But the devil was hindering his prayer in Daniel 10. But what did God say? Both of your prayers, I heard them when you prayed. See? See, see the difference? He hears your prayer, and once you pray, it's finished. But we, by re-praying and re-praying and, re and going to everybody and, oh, pray for me. Did, didn't we pray, on the, uh, pray over that already? Well, yeah, but I think you need some teaching because I'm not going to set me up and you up for another failure. You need some teaching, and that is when we pray, when you ask, you already received it if we agree. Well, I started tottering. Yeah, it's because you looked at the natural instead of looking at the word. You were busy playing over here and watching people and watching things, but you weren't watching Jesus. And when you see what he did, oh, it's, just, it's so good. So when we frame our world, we need to frame our world. So when you look at something and you've prayed for something and it's not going the way it want, you are going to ask the Holy Spirit, what is hindering my prayer? Pray in tongues. Well, I don't believe in praying in tongues then you're not going to get what you want. When you're praying in tongues, you are praying scripture, and God's going to show you a way out. Do you, do you get that? that? That is, oh, it's so powerful when you pray in tongues. You're praying the answer. You can even say, Holy Spirit, give me the interpretation of my tongues. But people don't have time. You know, I was listening to, um, what is his name, uh, Mike Hush, when he was here. He said, you don't have time not to pray. And I thought, you know what, that's pretty good, isn't it? What else was he saying? There was something, I thought I had written it down, but I don't see it here. But he said, he was, he had this, he had cancer. You know about that, where he had the big tumor and, it took him eight years. He eight years over a time, but once he got on the really got on the word of God. It only took I think eight months or something like that. No, yeah, I think so. And um, he said, "I was destroying my own flesh. The devil wasn't. It's because what I was saying and what I was believing. Instead of saying and believing the word of God." He grabbed onto that word of God, and he was not going to let go. And one day, that thing started to shrink, and the doctors gave no hope for him. C tumor, big old, stinky. It stunk, he said, because of the stuff oozing from it. Can you imagine that? He was destroying his own flesh with his words. But once he took that word and started seeing that he was already healed, he already had won the battle. And once he got that prayed, once he got that prayed, he stood on it, and every time it's already finished. And the more he read the word, the more he got into it, he almost, almost forgot about it in a sense until his wife was changing the bandage, and she said, we're not using so much bandage anymore, Mike. And they noticed it was shrinking. I was listening to the testimony on my car radio the other day. I just, when he was here on that Sunday, I think it was. But it's such a powerful testimony when you see how awful it looked and the oozing of it, and I can only imagine. But the word of God is powerful. And he took that word of God, and he spoke that word of God, and he listened to tapes. He listened to the word of God, and what happened to him? Completely healed. And he said, it wouldn't have had to take that long if I would have had that personal relationship with God. 
I would have had my healing a whole lot clicker, clicker, quicker. It's up to us. Do you realize that? It's up to us. You know, I'm going to say this here, and then we're going to end. In Romans, no, in Mark, I'm going to say this here, Mark 8, 22 through 26. And I'm just going to give you just a little synopsis of what that is. You can read it yourself. But they had brought a man to Jesus, and he was blind. And he wanted to see what Jesus did, because that was one of the worst towns there was. There's so much unbelief in that town. It was horrible. Kind of like Seattle with the six blocks. You know, it was that evil, that bad. What did Jesus do? He took the man by the hand. Why did he take the man by the hand? Because he was blind. And he led him, it says, about a mile out of town to get away from all that negativeness. Did you get that? He took him away from the negativeness. He took the blind man away. He took him by the hand and he led him out negative thinking, believing, and talking. And he took spit and he put it on his eyes and he says, can you see? He says, I see men like trees walking. What did Jesus do? Only time we know this. He laid hands on him again. Why did he do that? Why did he do that? Because of the man's unbelief. Because the unbelief that was in that town was still in that man, and he had to get that out of there. Did you get that? Because once it's prayed, it's prayed. That's way back, isn't it? That was before the cross. Now you have got the Holy Spirit. You've got all this teaching inside of you. So he led the man out there. He spit put it on his eyes. Can you see men walking like trees? And he prayed again because the unbelief that was in that man left and the man could see. And what did he tell the man? What did he tell the, the man that was blind now can see? He said, don't go back there. Don't go back to that town. Why? Because you'll go right back into that unbelief. Does that make sense to you? Wow. Once you've prayed the word of God, Andrew gave this testimony of a man that wanted to sell his house. Put a for sale sign out. It wasn't selling. He had two homes, the new one and that one. And he why is it selling? He prayed. What was hindering the brand? Andrew says, let's pray. What's hindering your prayer? And they prayed and rebuked the devil because the devil was holding back his blessings. So whenever you see blessings holding, that are held back, you bind the devil. Go into the word and find out. Bind the devil. Dismiss him as his assignment over. And thank God for what your original prayer was. And what happened? The man came and he had cash two years later. He said, the, the day you put that for sale, sound, uh, for sale sign out on your lawn, I said to my wife, I want to buy that house. Did you get that? The day he prayed. But... The hindering is what he had to pray. Finally, he's like, doing. What's hindering my prayer, Lord? And he found out, didn't he? The house was already sailed. God already heard the prayer. But there was a devil that was holding back his blessings. Is the devil holding back your blessings? Then rebuke him. Rebuke him. Hinder him from coming against you. I bind you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. We're not going to pray for people because I, I don't want you just all of a sudden, ooh, 
No, no, you're going to go home and you're going to study these things because a lot of these things, you do not need hands laid on you. You need to get the word of God and then come into an agreement. Just you alone will get it. Do you get that? And you will pray. And once you've prayed, you praise and worship God. That's why praise and worship is so powerful. I, do, I love to praise and worship. I, at home, I, when I'm alone, I just really get, mm -hmm, because I love him so much, but I know what praise and worship is doing, and I know when something's in my life and isn't going good, you know what I can do? I don't feel like praising and worshiping, but I praise and worship because I know that those, those things, those hindrances, maybe it was me that did it, I'm not sure, those cords will be broken that have held me back. God is so good. Is he good? No. no good thing will he withhold from us. Excuse me? Amen. Amen. So in 2 Timothy, listen to this, 4-7. I have fought the good fight or completed well, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. After you pray for a situation, no matter what it is, you pray. You can already say, how do you fight the good fight now? Because it's right between here, it's the battle between your ears. Because the devil's going to come up against it, it's not working. You're going to look around and people are going to say, you know what, let that go. Do you see what I'm saying? I prayed for somebody the other day for their marriage. You guys don't know him. And I said, do you want that man back? She said, yes. I said, well, let's get to it. And we prayed. And she, like, got an excitement and a, in her eye, and I went, whoa. The Holy Spirit just went right at her. The devil doesn't know what he's doing. That guy, he's, he just better stop and say, forgive me, honey. Got it? Got it? You take the word of God, and the word of God is powerful. The word of God will just knock the socks right off the devil. Oh, he doesn't wear socks. That's right. Can't afford them because we stripped him of all of his. No, no. Oh, you did. Yes, Lord, you stripped him. No, no. When we went into hell with Jesus, our sins, we stripped the devil. Because we are in him and he is in us. Did you get it? You don't have to do everything over again. He kept the commandments for you. That's like we kept them. Isn't that awesome? Oh, God, you're so good. Father, I thank you. Let's take communion over this. Let's do that. How about Let's pray in the spirit. Let's pray in the spirit. We want to praise him in the spirit. One of you, no, no, it's more than one, is looking for a breakthrough in your life. And it's not happening because the devil is hindering it because you don't want to give in to the word and confess it and pray in the spirit. Okay. He said, just do it and you will get it and quote my scripture and speak what you want, not what you don't want. Yeah, you said, is she talking to me? God said, yes, I talk through her to you. Whenever you have a need, whenever you have a need, pray in the spirit. When you don't know how to pray, pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. He will release to you like you won't believe. Let's pass out the communion, please. How many of you saw our president at Mount Rushmore? 
was that delicious. I listened to it more than once. I recorded it. That was, was that good? That was good. This is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. Woohoo! You know that? Yep. Just the beginning. I just can't wait to see more. Because there's so much, some of us, we have been talking and we know so, ma so much. And when you pray in the spirit, things are going to be released to you and you're going to go, I better not tell anybody that one because that's pretty heavy. And then you come across to Facebook and you saw a picture on a t-shirt and you go, <coughs> got it? Of who our president's next vice president will be. Woo-wee, right? We can praise and worship our God because I tell you, he's got everything covered. We just have to, we just have to click into that. We have to download that like a computer. Download that inside of you. It's already there. Now you have to take it out. Like you click on it and it comes up on the screen and you take a copy of it. Father, we thank you that we have a covenant with you. I give you the glory and the honor. I thank you for that. I thank you, Jesus. Let's eat. Hallelujah. Oh, goodness. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. God is good. God is good. His blood sealed the covenant between man and God. The blood. The blood. When you look at Abraham made a covenant with God, who walked through the blood? God. Where was Abraham? He didn't walk through the blood. God wasn't going to let him mess it up, but he left him watch. He was carrying Abraham in his heart. Think on that. We get involved and we mess things up. Who is the high priest? Who was the high priest? Jesus. He doesn't mess things up. God doesn't mess things up. Jesus doesn't mess things up. And you do not mess things up because you've got the word of God. It's a promise. It's a guarantee. So thank you for the blood. In the precious name of Jesus, I'm the righteousness of God. Amen. Oh, God, you're good. You're just good, Daddy. You're so faithful. You're so good. You're so awesome. Debbie, what song is God putting on your heart? Devil, no, not today. Or should we have one of the of the songs you played this morning, God Bless America, Battle Hamlet. Which one do you want? God Bless America. Let's stand. While they're getting ready, while they're getting ready, did anybody hear Trump talk about, about Felchie, Dr. Felchie, our president? He's going down. Who is behind Felchie giving $3 billion to China and to Felchie? Who? Who else? Obama. They've got it all. It's coming down. It's coming down a little at a time. Why is America, United States, out of debt? We are, you know. China and Russia, yep. Hallelujah. Yeah. So now, think about that. You are in a good place. Keep yourself in that good place. Make decisions. Only the decisions that will bless you and your family. Watch your mouth. Please watch your mouth. The way you talk to each other. Got it? Got it? Let's sing.
him right now with oh we applaud you father we thank you that we live in this united states of america thank you father god you are so good to us thank you father god for our president president donald j trump and father god all the destruction all the protests that's going across the land i just plead the blood of jesus over it people that were against it will now be for before we're against Trump, will now be for him. And they will see the truth, and the truth will set them free in the yeah. precious name of Jesus. And I thank you. And for whatever is evil will be rooted out of our government in the precious name of Yeshua Meshua. Oh, just think. When you got a very high person in Rome that says God or Jesus is a son of Satan, that's not the truth. That's not the truth. Allah is Satan. Elohim is the natural God. What is another name for our God? Well, we've got so many. Oh, the great El Elyon is the one we serve. That's his Hebrew name. Our great God. He's got many names. Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Nisi. He's got them all, and they're for us, for our use, in the name of Jesus. Now, I command and demand, Satan, you get your hands off of these people and off of those who are watching and that will be watching this in the precious name of Jesus. And these coming days, Father God, I thank you for the protection over our president, over our military, over our police officers. And I agree with our president, Donald J. Trump, when he said the policeman will not be kicked out. The policeman will stay, and they will grow. Get it? And schools will start in the fall. And any of the NFL that tries to black life matters at the national anthem, they won't be able to do it. Do you agree? Yeah. I do not want that. That is not, it does not belong Politics does not belong in sports. Do you agree? Yes. We've got an agreement. And Father God, this lie of the COVID disease, I curse it now in the name of Jesus. You all said? Amen. Now, who, uh, we sent this out, Kim sent this out to the people, and this is for all mask wearers, especially those um, um, of you who think wearing it outside is not stupid. I know I'm about to burst your Google doctor decree bubble. Did you get this? We'll give Mary 
Who didn't get it? Who doesn't have access to a computer? Who's got it? You got it. You got it. Please inform people. Inform people. Give people this so they understand that the mask is damaging you. This is the best that I've read so far on this. Okay? So, Mary, you come and get this extra copy I have here, and if we need more copies, I'll have Donna, if she would, copy them off for me. So I bless you in the precious name of Jesus, and you all have a wonderful day. I'm done.